to Millennium Stage. Tonight's performance is part of the 16th Annual Page to Stage Festival, going on now through Monday. For more information, please consult the official Page to Stage program. Please note tonight's performance contains strong language and mature content. And now, please enjoy Theater Prometheus's Abortion Road Trip. Good morning, this is KTX, the number one radio station in Houston for country, folk, and Americana. It is 6.17 a.m. For all those early birds out, here's a fun one to keep you awake. It's Shania Twain's new single, Life's About to Get Good. I wasn't just broken, I was shy. Can I smoke in here? I'd rather you didn't. She asked you not to. I'm stressed out. Why are you stressed out? This is a stressful situation. It's not your situation. Then why am I here? Uh, I'll just roll the window down. Thank you. So, thanks for taking us all this way. No problem. My friend Adam said you took him to Dallas once and were cool about it, so. Yeah. Yeah, but New Mexico's like forever away. And for being so cool about the price, one driver literally hung up on us. At the time, we were only offering a grand for like a 2400 trip. So, what's in New Mexico? Damn it. The end of my life. Seriously? You're gonna freak her out. It's not the end of your life. I'm going to New Mexico to commit murder. Do you need help? Already called the RA. Jennifer? It's Saturday night. And? And Jennifer parties every Saturday. Hard. Uh, are you locked out? I am. I could break in for you. Okay, okay, don't look at me like that. If you want to get into your room tonight and you don't want to have to wait for drunk Jen, you might as well let me try. What's to stop you from breaking into my room another night? Basic human decency? Huh. Nick Flynn, huh? That's... It's less pretentious when you're from Boston. I wasn't and I, gonna You say... were. And all right, fine. All right. Break into my room. I have a paper on literature of the homeless I need to finish. Oh, that's why you're reading. That's why. I am sorry that I called you pretentious. You didn't. I did. I'm Quinn. Lexa. <laughs> and to be fair, that is one of my favorite books. I'm just <laughs> deeply ashamed about it. <laughs> Could you please put your phone on silent? No, that'll just freak him out. How would he even know? I wouldn't respond. You're not responding now? Oh, shit. What? Seth said he loved me. That's it. I love you. Okay. Why is that cause for panic? Well, he never says I love you, not even in person. He always just says, love you or you the best. He's never actually said I love you. You've been with him for how long and he still hasn't said I love you? Four years and no. In person, he just says, you're my favorite, which I actually always thought was really sweet. But I love you. No, that is heavy. He knows. He does not know. Give me your phone. See, look, here. Three days ago, I love you. No, that is an I and then a picture of a heart and then a you. That is not I love you. It's the same thing. It is not, and you know it. Wouldn't you be suspicious if Quinn suddenly said, I love you after not saying it for years? There's no way I date someone for four years and not make them say, I love you. You cannot make someone say, I love you. Sure you can. It goes like this. Do you love me, yes or no? If they say no, dunsies, we're through. If they say yes, I say, I need to hear you say it. And then bam, I love you. Have you ever made someone say I love you, like, to your face? No. That's weird, right? Uh, I don't know if it's weird. I just don't say I love you to a lot of people. Why not? <laughs> because when I say it, I, I want the person I say it to know that I mean it. And if you never say it? I don't mean it. 
No, he knows. He does not know. How do I even respond? Just say it back. I can't. Why not? Because it's not true. All of a sudden, you don't love him. I don't love him today. I don't love anyone today. <laughs> Why? Because of the murder? Yes. It's not murder. That is not what we learned in Catholic school. Well, calling it murder is not good for your psyche. My psyche? It's murder. Mm, whatever. I'm fine with it. You can't take a life that doesn't exist. I can take whatever I want. Well, I'm not comfortable with you calling it murder. Well, this isn't about you. This is about me and Alexis. Who is Alexis? That's what I'd name my kid if I were to have it. Her. Him. How does that you work? You can't name a fetus. I can do whatever I want. I am an American. <laughs> Remind me why we didn't just fly again. It would have been cheaper. I wanted time to think. You can think on a plane. All I think about on planes is how angry I am about the tiny seats and the fake air and the mean flight We get it. <sighs> Crap! Oh. oh. I always do this. Lex and I got the clumsy gene. You lucked out. I can't take off from work. Does she even want me there? Are you gonna tell her about Mom, what? Mom, she needs you right now, man. I know you two aren't talking, but telling her could really help her get through this. If I tell her, then it's real. It's too real, and I'm not ready for that yet. Well, I think it could be cathartic. Plus, you the only one who knows which gas stations have the blue pack of spirits, huh? So, do you know anyone in New Mexico? No. My nurse in Houston said I had to go to San Antonio, so my friend Quinn, she took me to that one, and the woman there told me a bunch of facts that she's apparently legally required to tell me, but when I say facts, I mean nonsense, because, like, I don't have any medical knowledge, and most of it sounded like bullshit. <laughs> and then they made me watch this video. It was weird. So I looked it up on my own at home and found that my best bet is in New Mexico. Oh. Yeah, our mom's best friend died. She fucking died trying to do an at-home abortion, like, what the fuck, Texas? What if a woman can't afford to drive? Is she supposed to just die? You're going to make her pull over. Can we talk about something else? I wrote an obituary. Oh, for fuck's sake. Please tell me you did not. No, I totally did, and I would like to read it. Now. You want to read it now. Please don't read it now. Yes. Dude, no, I'm not listening to an obituary you wrote for a kid who doesn't exist and will never exist. I will go on this weird cat ride with you and I will sit Alexis Aubrey Anderson was one of the brightest stars to ever no, shine through. No, dude, no. Through Alexa Marina Pearson's vagina. Jesus. Had Alexis been born, he, but hopefully she, would have been a tennis player in his, or preferably her, younger years and then grew up to be a politician. Just say she. After somehow surprising everyone with her mad policy making, mad is in the slang term, I figure that one will be around forever. I'm pretty sure they edit the slang out. With her mad policy making, she first became a city councilman. Did you just completely change the tense? From there, she rose up to mayor, and then governor, and then she became the first female president of the United States. Hillary. Too soon. Will you stop reading now? I'm nervous. I know. Do you know anyone who's had an abortion? Um. Lexa, no, you cannot ask things like that. What? It's not like I asked if she knew a rapist or a serial killer. <laughs> you literally call abortion murder like two minutes ago. I was kidding mostly about that. I'm like super pro-choice. Okay. Like I think the clinic should be as easy to find as like McDonald's. They're going under. What? McDonald's. Then why are they still everywhere? I do, actually. Who? Lexa, no. You cannot ask things like that. I'm sorry. She's nervous. She gets weird when she's nervous. This is a long taxi drive. Can we just talk about something else?
Are you dating anyone? Stop asking personal questions, Lexa. Stop calling abortion murder. Stop asking personal questions. What am I supposed to do, sit and chain smoke like you are? You can read a book or something. You know I nervous talk. I also know you tend to get too personal too fast with strangers. What's your special person's name? Taylor. Ambiguous gender. I like it. She is my wife. So much for ambiguity. How did you two meet? Did you meet in this cab? We met at a bar. I should be clear with you. I am a lesbian and I will hit on you. Shit. What? You stole my pickup line. <laughs> Taylor. Hi, I'm Kate. Drink? Always. It was a lesbian bar, but there were a ton of straight girls there. I'm pretty sure Taylor and I were the only lesbians there. <laughs> that keeps happening. Like, I went to a bar that was supposed to be for mostly lesbians with Quinn once, and it was full of straight girls who, quote, didn't want to be hit on by men. Like, seriously, you came to a lesbian bar because you didn't want to be hit on. <laughs> you didn't think that through. Yeah, I guess they assume women hit on women less aggressively. <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, that's bullshit. That's patriarchal level bullshit. If I don't get to rant, neither do you. Fine. But, like, it's not patriarchal, because, like, it's true. Like, as the token straight girl in this cab, I would much rather be hit on by a woman than a man. You turn on a woman, she leaves you alone. You turn on a man, he tries to murder you. <laughs> like, seriously, you can Google it. Rejected man murders woman. There are thousands of results. But not all men. Ugh. <laughs> Murder seems like a common theme today. Yeah. It's going to be a long 11 hours. Right. New topic, please. I think if I could meet a genie right now, I would wish to go forward in time. But like hundreds of years. Like 30-30. This is your new topic. But I also want to punch the inventor of the bra in the face, so I guess I would ask the genie to introduce me to the doctor. The doctor? From Doctor Who. I thought his name was Doctor Who. <laughs> now you're just trying to piss me off. I am. Who would you want to punch? Edison. Wasn't he like the worst? He was. I wonder if Edison would vote in favor of getting rid of abortion clinics. You know, I really should have seen this coming. Okay. I'm Minnie. Quinn, right? Lexa's setting us up. She's not coming. Wait. Your mini, as in the mini who doesn't even live in Texas? I just moved back. How else would I know you're supposed to meet my sister? You look nothing like her. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> yeah. Could you text Lexa for me? Tell her my phone's dead. Sure. Tell her I came, I saw, I was uninterested. I'm going home. Uninterested? Who reads bell hooks in a coffee shop? Why are you and your sister both so judgy about what other people are reading? Seriously? Bell hooks? Is she the distraction to your texting? My texting? Just text her for me, okay? I gotta see if my mom can pick me up. Yeah, well, I have a girlfriend, so. <laughs> Lexa hates your girlfriend. Huh. <laughs> yeah. I should go. I borrowed it from Lexa. And yes, I am actually reading it. I'm nothing like her. I don't, I know this is super dangerous to say, but I don't actually read for fun. I get bored and I wind up doing something else. So if you really are reading bell hooks in the middle of the day in a coffee shop, we wouldn't work out anyway. <laughs> How did she get you here? Like. What did she say to get you to come? So she told me she would buy me congrats coffee for graduating a semester early. 
Well, she told me she was going to introduce me to her asshole sister because my girlfriend really is the worst. want to punch Jefferson in the face. What? You asked who we want to punch in the face. Yeah, a while ago. And like Thomas Jefferson or Jefferson, that teacher you dated in high school? Oh, I forgot about him. Both. Definitely both. Why Thomas Jefferson? Why not? Quinn wants to know if you shaved. <laughs> I thought you were joking. Nope, that's an actual text. Did Lex make sure to shave her bushy ass vagina? I don't shave for doc I don't shave for my partners and I'm not shaving for doctors. I know way more than I want to about your special place. Quinn knows more than I want her to about my life in like general. This is true. I'd be a shitty mom. You're 25. Who's a good mom at 25? Our mom was a good mom, and she had you at 18. Our mom was born to be someone's mom. You're holding yourself to an unachievable standard. Did you have a good mom? No, not really. I don't think mom is happy. Who has a happy mom? Motherhood sucks. <laughs> My mother was happy. That's probably why she was shitty. That's the trade-off. I feel like I read an article about that on like NPR's website or something. What have I told you about NPR? That it is for pretentious white people and bored housewives. Stop reading NPR. Seriously though, do you think I could have been a good mom? You can still be a good mom. One abortion doesn't mean you can never have kids again. It makes it harder though. You're being insane though. Are you a mom? I feel like I would be like a trying too hard to be cool, but really just annoying mom. Like I'd say words like hip and bombastic in front of my kid's friends and then like let people stay over and then wonder why my kid was pregnant at like 15. I have no idea what I do with a teen mom. Like what do you even say to that? Use a condom next time? Oh, that's not exactly supportive, Minnie. I guess I'd be a shit mom, too. I used to want, like, an entire litter of children. Do you want kids? <laughs> uh, I want the idea of children, but not actual children. <laughs> right? Like, there's something cool about having a mini-me, but something really not cool about having to take care of another human being. Kind of like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I was a kid, I wanted like 10, remember? Yeah, you used to also want to be a marine biologist who only worked with seagulls. <laughs> That's not even a thing or the right word. Whatever. So you two are sisters, right? Half. We look nothing alike. We're not even the same race. OK, race is subjective. Our mom was adventurous. And friendly. You have no idea. And you're really just taking a cab ride just to think. Couldn't someone drive you? Sorry if that's too blunt. After everything I've asked you, no, not at all. Mom couldn't get off work and Quinn had this thing and Lex is too afraid to tell Seth. I am not afraid to tell Seth. So call him. I didn't want to drive across state lines and all of our other friends would have been too judgy. And Lexa didn't want to fly, so. Your plates are crazy expired. You're going to get a ticket soon. So no kids but a wife. Did you always know you were gay? You were the most forward passenger I think I've ever had. <laughs> It's a long drive, why not? Let's get heavy. 
Could we not get heavy? So what, just sit here and talk about Doctor Who and inventors we want to punch? We're going to New Mexico, Minnie, so I can abort my unborn child, who is also the child of my boyfriend. My boyfriend who thinks that I'm going to New Mexico so that I can find my like long lost father. What about this situation isn't heavy? Your dad moved to New Mexico? I have no idea where he is. Do you know where Kevin is? New York. What is in New York? 11 wife and a 28 year old son named Mikey. Wait, 28? Cheated on his wife with mom and went back for the baby and obviously not this one. Get this, our birthdays are only three months apart. How did I not know that? Because unlike you, I can keep things to myself. You shouldn't have kept that to yourself. It's not a thing that just comes up. My dad's name is Kevin. <laughs> oh, cool. Is he also an alcoholic banker? No, baseball coach at a high school. Good dad. Lucky you. You got a good mom. Lucky you. Speaking of hot and things, I think you should tell Seth. What? Not for like permission or anything, just you're not really a good secret keeper. I am an excellent secret keeper. <laughs> I am. You told mom I was gay the second I told you. Not the second. You texted her while I told you. <laughs> and you're welcome. Mom was super cool about it. You were worried for nothing. I just think that this will destroy you if you don't tell him. And say what? And in a text message, oh, hey, Seth, I'm aborting your unborn child today. You have no say in it. No worries. Yeah, that'll go well. You could call. I could also use a coat hanger. Jesus. <laughs> exactly. What's Quinn like? That's your girlfriend's name, right? She's the best, worst person I've ever met. So, we should talk. About how you finished your article early and I can finally put it on the website? <laughs> she started this online blog thing as um, a side job. It's kind of a mess, but cool. <laughs> uh, she writes articles on the current events and news and has this blog section called In My News, which Lexa curates. Wait, is curate the right word? It's, um, it's a little heavy. You think everything is heavy. I'm pregnant. Does Minnie know? You're the first person I'm telling. Shit. Yeah. So not even Seth. You're the first person I'm telling. I took like five pregnancy tests like three weeks ago and then I went to the doctor yesterday. I'm fucking pregnant. They don't make a ton of money off the website, but the ad revenue and donations make for a nice side profit. So what are, why are you telling me this? Why not your sister or the person who knocked you up? The person who knocked me it up? It seemed presumptuous to assume. Oh, it is sad. Okay, sorry. I just, you seem panicked. I am fucking panicked. I want to get an abortion. Oh. Oh? Yes, oh. I'm asking you to drop me and to not tell Minnie. I don't think she could. I don't want mom to know or Seth. I just. Lexa, have you really thought this through? Can you take me or not, Quinn? Sometimes I think Lexa and Quinn are closer than me and Lexa. Than me and Quinn too, actually. Maybe they should be dating. <laughs> Quinn sounds nice. Half the time she is. It's all really complicated. I know. You are here for emotional support, not to lecture me about Seth. Okay. You know, I never realized how massive Texas is. I mean, you hear about it and you study it, but just Get into another state is like a journey. Yeah, but it's prettier though than I thought. All the water in unexpected places. <laughs> Traffic and lakes. That should be our state motto. So, four years. That's a long time. It is a long time. Are you thinking about... She isn't. I have commitment issues. Oh. 
Yeah, he's asked like twice. Once when they moved from Austin to Houston and then again on her birthday last year. And you said no both times? She said, I have commitment issues. <laughs> of course. Seth and I are complicated. Tell me about it. You don't even want to say I love you over the phone. Not in a text message, I don't. Lexa, you're an I love you whore. I refuse to believe you never told Seth you love him. I have never texted it. I don't text it. There's something wrong with both of you. It doesn't seem real in a text. You know, you can't send a text that is full of emojis one day and then something as heavy as an I love you the next. I love you shouldn't be that heavy. Well, maybe yours aren't, but I believe that they are sacred and should be said scarcely. I've legitimately heard you tell Quinn's cat that you love it, like, all the time. I love pebbles. You told a tree you loved it. That was a really beautiful tree. You're so full of shit. Literally, I'm pregnant. Jeez. What? We're going to get heavy, Minnie. We are going I to am well aware of where we're going. So is our driver, right? You totally get it. Thoroughly. I'm just saying, neither of you understand what this is like. You don't even know her. Fine. You, Minerva, do not understand what this is like. You, driver, might. I don't know. We're not supposed to be getting heavy. She has a name. I don't want to know her name. No offense. I don't want to know your name. Like, if I saw you on the street, I would not say hello. Okay. Not because you're a cab driver. I actually think that's really cool. It's just this whole fucked up, awful situation. I just, I would like to remember as little of it as I can. That makes sense. If you're feeling guilty. No, no, it's not guilt. It's, see, this is one of those times when I would say that there was like something deep inside of me, like in my gut. But, look, I can't say that because there is something inside of me. And it, it's not guilt. It's everything else. John F. Kennedy. What? I want to punch him in the face. For Cuba or for the DR? For Maryland. I would give my left ovary to have met Marilyn Monroe. Do we have left and right ovaries? <laughs> we both really need to learn more about our own anatomies. Who's your person that you want to meet? Do they have to be living? Well, I guess not. Is it Eleanor Roosevelt? Because if so, that's boring. Mary Shelley. Like Frankenstein Mary Shelley? Yeah. Is it your favorite book? No, I, I like the book all right, but her life. What was it like to be the daughter of Mary Wollstonecraft? I mean, what were family dinners like? Men and women must be educated by the opinions and matters of the society that they live in. It's manners. Really? Yes, really. I'm just mildly impressed you know who Wollstonecraft is. For some reason, Lexa got me into women's studies. She major, I minored. My person, hands down, Meryl Streep. Now, that's boring. That is kind of a given. She is not. I have loved her since out of Africa. I will love her forever. This is why I say straight women are boring. <laughs> Lesbians are boring. Isn't lesbian bed death like a total thing? No. We, we are not talking about that. I'm just saying, at least straight women are having sex. Not good sex, only like 30% orgasm. <laughs> Fuck, pick up. It's Seth. Pick up. And say what? Anything. Hey, Seth. Hey. Shitty day? Sort of. 
Seth, you know Minnie hates it when I'm on the phone. So we don't have secrets, right? Why? I'm trying to figure out the right thing to do. I, I don't know, Seth. I just thought I should see my father. Quinn, if you cheated on me or something like that... Lexa is having an abortion. <sighs> okay. 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 She asked me to drive her there. So drive her. I don't exactly agree with it. Kinda not your place, Quinn. Well, if I'm the driver, it sort of becomes my place, doesn't it? Fine, I'll drive her. <laughs> You're not supposed to know. Then why are you telling me to try and stop her? You're her big sister. Couldn't you take her out for drinks? You <laughs> want me to take my pregnant sister for drinks, <laughs> but you don't want her to have an abortion. Since when did you become pro-life? I'm just saying some support for Lexa would be good right now. You're her best friend. If you want to support her, then drive her to the clinic. Hold her hand when she starts nervously talking about Doctor Who and how guilty she feels. And cry with her, but don't do this, whatever this is. Seriously, Seth, I have to go. I don't know why she told you and not me. And I don't care because it's not about me. Don't make this about you, Quinn. I might rewrite it, but like more seriously. Rewrite what? The obituary. God, no. It's important to me. Maybe when we get back, I can give it to Seth and explain it to him that way. You think he will understand you had an abortion because you hand him an obituary? Well, I'm, How does that even make sense? I'm tongue-tied. I'm a writer. I'm better at reading off a piece of paper than I am just emoting. Then write him a letter. But please don't make anyone sit through another obituary. Another one? You didn't even let me get through the first one. Because it was terrible. And obviously not what you have written down. Well, I couldn't read what I had actually written. It was too heavy. Okay, so here's my deal. This is sounding a lot like another guilt trip. Rape? Fine. You should not be forced to keep a child that is a constant reminder of tragedy. Incest? Same Z's. You could die? Okay, that makes sense, but like, I'm in a four-year relationship with the person that I'm probably gonna be with forever. Like, what is wrong with me? And I haven't even told him. So tell him. Isn't Seth always talking about how big of a feminist he is? Seriously. Seriously. <laughs> He's constantly saying how he's the biggest feminist in every room. It's not about feminism, though. It's about us and our lives. Like, how do you say something like that? Like, hey, Seth, I'm pregnant, but I don't trust you enough to have a family. Like, where do you go from that? How could you possibly say something like that? You can't. Exactly. You just say it. That's how. If it's the truth, then you got to say it or else you're lying. And that's worse. Some things just shouldn't be said. Look, I'm really happy that lesbians can just run around saying whatever they want to one another with no consequences. <laughs> but like, for the rest of us, the consequences outweigh everything else. Like, I can't call him, I can't tell him ever. If you can't talk to Seth about heavy stuff, you who loves to get heavy, why are you still with him? Why are you with Quinn? I just think certain things should be talked about. Don't you? Not if it's destructive. No, I don't. Sometimes who you love is more important than honesty. Say something, please. I don't even know how to process this. It was a mistake. Yeah, a massive fucked up mistake. I'm sorry. Stop saying sorry. It's like... If you can save your relationship with one lie, why not do it? What good is the truth if it's definite and unchangeable? How many times did you sleep with him? I, I don't know. 
three, maybe. Three. I was drunk every time, black out, not myself. Like so black out that maybe. No, Taylor, I'm sorry I was drunk, but it was consensual. You're a lesbian. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Fuck. I know. You don't fucking know. I'm sorry. You're always sorry. So you just, I don't want him to look at me like that. Like what? Like I've taken something from him. Like I've ripped him. And it's over now? Yes. You swear to God. I swear to God, it's done. It was a, a mistake. Mis like, I remember the look that Dan gave me when I told him about Seth and how I cheated on him and I was in love with someone else. And if Seth ever looked at me like that, I would never stop crying. So he's a partner, isn't he? At the firm? Yeah. Are you gonna keep working there? I can't quit. Kate, you're fucking pregnant was was I was pregnant like you can see it in their eyes you know like their pupils start shaking and you know that you've just you've ripped them they're broken and they can't ever be fixed so you waited to tell me you were pregnant until after you had an abortion? I was terrified, and it's not like I wanted to keep it. I need to go. I can't. I need to leave. I would cut my own heart out if Seth ever looked at me like that. So you'd rather he find out from someone else? He's not going to find out. I only told you and Quinn, and I really only told you because I knew Quinn would tell you. After you went to the clinic back home. You waited to tell me after you told Quinn, and after you went to the clinic back home, and after you asked her to pick you up. When did Quinn tell you? Exactly. You could have talked to me about it. Most awkward conversation ever. Hey, Lex, you know that abortion you're planning on having, the one you didn't want to talk to me about? Yeah, let's talk about it. It's not that I didn't want to talk to you. Doesn't matter what you wanted. That's how it felt. I didn't want it to be real. I thought the less people I told, the less real it would be. Besides, you hate talking about anything heavy. I just, I made a bad call, okay? I thought wrongly that Quinn would be more supportive. I didn't even tell mom until I asked her to help pay for the cab. I get that. I do too. We'll need gas soon, won't we? Texas is enormous. Where are we now? Arlington. We should get a drink when we get to Dallas. I want to move. To like New Mexico or? Nope, to like Ireland. Is driving through Texas that depressing? <laughs> no, it's just, I want to live in a cottage somewhere on an owl and like make my own food, grow my own food and <laughs> make my own clothes and sell the extra for income. That might be the gayest thing you've ever said. <laughs> the gayest thing I ever said was, I like screwing women. <laughs> Quinn freaking out? About what? Like, is she mad? She took you to that first clinic, didn't she? Did she tell you about that? Not really. She took me to one of those fake clinics. What? She said she didn't know, and to be fair, they do look a lot like clinics, but yeah, she took me to a crisis pregnancy center. Are you fucking shitting me? I'm sure it was a mistake, Min. Those places seem so real. <laughs> they are real, a real piece of shit. It was an honest mistake. Those places are super confusing. 
I doubt it was a mistake. She'd think you regret it. But she told me that I would regret it, but she's not that pushy. Yes, she is. Please don't get in a fight about this. I thought she told you. That she took you to a fake clinic. No, she told me she took you to a very real clinic and that you weren't ready. They told me that if I had an abortion, I'd never be able to have kids. They're full of shit, Lex, seriously. No, I know. I thought you'd think it was funny. Too pissed at Quinn. So Quinn, on our way to the first clinic or first place that we went, she just kept talking about how great Seth and I would be parenting. Like, she didn't make any speeches about a baby's right to live, and she didn't say don't do it. She just kept going on and on about what a great pair Seth and I are and how sensitive I am. That's manipulative. Yeah, completely ignoring the fact that Seth's the bad kind of bipolar working at Starbucks, and you work freelance. It was a mistake. Man. Hey. Hey. I think I'm going to get fired. <laughs> of course. Taylor, I realize we're not okay right now, but I need you. I'm going through a really rough time and I need my girlfriend right now. You're an alcoholic. Taylor. And I don't mean that colloquially. I don't mean it in some ha ha way. I, I mean, you have a legitimate problem and I don't want to be with you as it destroys your life. Are you breaking up with me? You lied to me about having an abortion. You cheated on me with a man, a man you still work with. Don't pretend you're the only one that's hurting here. I threw up on a client, kind of a big client. I mean, throwing up on a person is bad enough, but this client was from Big Pharma. You do not throw up on Big Pharma. <laughs> I had a drink before work because all of this was stressing me out. Oh, all of this. Us fighting, not being okay. So I, I was so stressed that I, I thought I'd have a drink and be done with it, but I tried to call you and you didn't pick up. And I really, really wasn't okay, so I just- Got cut. wasted. I'm gonna get fired over this. Talk to me, please. You need to choose me or alcohol. And if you want to be with me, you have to stop drinking. If not, Taylor, I'm going to stay at a friend's house. I'll Taylor. text you in the morning. If you're sober in the morning, we'll figure this out. If not, I'll move out by the end of the week. I hate when it's quiet. We know. But look, what if Quinn's right? What if I am too sensitive or ruining me and Seth's chances? Or... Okay then, what's your reason? My reason? For getting an abortion. Do I need a reason? I think it'll help like when you're 40 and explaining it to your actual children. It'll help if you had a reason. I guess I'm too poor for a child right now. Okay. But like, is that even justified? Like, would I accept that if mom said that to us? I don't think the reason needs to be justified. And mom would probably say it flat out, point blank, but you, you need a reason, and I think it should be said aloud. For who? For you, your sanity. You've been freaking out for hours. This is freak out worthy. Don't do that. Do what? Tell the truth? Act like this isn't something you want. I don't know what I want. I just, I feel like this is when we should get heavy. Of course you do. You keep saying that, but I'm not super sure I understand what you mean. What is the worst thing that has ever happened to you? Oh, that's what you mean. 
yeah, to let's, let's get heavy means let's relive all our worst moments and talk about them like we talk about how we like our coffee. I just feel like it helps when you're in the middle of a crisis to talk about another crisis that you got over. You know, to reassure yourself that this is something you can get through too. Well, that's a nice way to put it. See? Let's get heavy. Hey. Hey. How dark are we talking? How dark are you willing to get? So we're not going to talk about it? We're still not even halfway to the border. I don't think we want to cry for the rest of the drive. But maybe we don't cry. Maybe we heal. Does your dad still look like a sleazy 70s rock star? He's got short hair now. Oh, so a sleazy 50s pop star. <laughs> hmm. Is he more like a Brian Wilson or a Paul McCartney? Ringo. Ooh, mm. <laughs> figures. I'm assuming you're also willing to share. I'll go first if everyone else does. So his son's name is Mikey? Kevin Michael Grant III. Ooh, that's gross. <laughs> mm. Losing my job. Almost losing Taylor. That is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Your job? Corporate defense. I was pretty good at it. Oh. I was also an alcoholic. Oh. So what are we going to do? He's my brother, Mom. Half, but still my brother. He's a son of a bitch. And all the possible ways to mean that. Mom! I'm sorry, but I'm being serious. Why'd you get fired? Kind of complicated reasons. Too heavy to talk about? No, just it all boiled down to I was drinking too much and too regularly. I blew a major deal and had this weird relationship with a coworker. They probably should have fired me way sooner. As hard as it is, I, I think we should talk about what happened. I don't even know how. I'm here for you, okay? It's okay. None of it, none of this is your fault. I screamed, no. I kept telling him that I was his sister. I'm so sorry, Minnie. I shouldn't have been there. I shouldn't have gone. Like, I shouldn't have gone. You were 15 years old looking for your deadbeat father. Don't blame yourself. Mom. I'm, I'm so sorry, Minnie. I'm pregnant. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, never actually even. Oh, I, Minnie, never? What am I going to do? We don't have to have this conversation right now. No, I want to. Are you sure? So, the worst thing that ever happened to me didn't actually happen. When I was 15, I wrote my father this like long emotional letter about how girls need their fathers, blah, blah, blah. And I gave it to my mom to mail it, and she did. Honey, you have options. I know it, it doesn't feel like it, but you don't have to go through this alone. What options? Well, for one, you don't have to stay pregnant. But what she didn't tell me was that he wrote back. He mailed it and everything, uh, and she opened it and never gave it to me. I found it like two years ago, I guess, when I was looking under her bed for her money sock. <laughs> I can't do that. I don't. Okay, I, okay. So um, how about adoption? Hmm? No, I don't want to. I just. If you want to keep it? No, That's I don't want to. You don't have to decide right now. So obviously when I saw that, I was infuriated at mom, like for hiding that. And then I read it. It said, real women don't need anything. 
written on a post-it note and a check for $500. Mom, hmm? I want to, I can't even say the word. This is heavy stuff. You sound like Lexa. She's always calling things heavy. Like, how could I be mad at mom for hiding that, right? Like, that's the most confusing thing in the world. My letter was five pages. Five pages. And he sends back a post-it note and a check. If I'd seen that at 15, I would have at least attempted suicide. Whatever you decide, Mary, just let me know. Mom? Yes, Minnie? Could you please not tell Lex about this? Not ever? She's just too... I don't think she'd get it. Okay, I won't tell her. But you should. Someday. your turn. My turn for what? Seriously? You weren't listening at all? I was lost in thought. Of course. Fine. What is the worst thing that has ever happened to you? When I didn't get recruited to that D1 school. Seriously? Seriously, I'm not like you, Lex. Super tragic things don't happen to me. What school? You paying for volleyball. That must have sucked. It did. She went to UCLA. It wasn't you paying. And then you quit playing and transferred. I'm sorry, I'm not like you. I thought I was gonna go pro, I was 18. You are absolutely the worst at getting heavy. That's because getting heavy is the worst. What's the best thing? What? What's the best thing that's ever happened to you? That's hard. Maybe for you, negative Nancy. <laughs> okay, fine. What's the best thing that ever happened to you? So, we were down by 10 points and then we just- You quit playing! <laughs> it is ridiculously easy to piss you off. <sighs> Whatever. So is the best thing that ever happened to you when you and Taylor got married? It's up there. But not the best? The best was the night she decided to stay with me. That is the sweetest thing I've ever heard. She is by far the best. Now that I think of it, meeting her was the absolutely best thing. I want to feel that way about anyone. I don't even care who. <laughs> so you don't feel that way about Seth? You know that I don't. So why are you still with him? This is why I don't talk to you about him. Why, because I'm right? So that's how you feel about Quinn? She's the best person in the world? She's at least top five. <laughs> Seth and I are complicated. Tell me about it. I just want you to admit that you don't want to have a family with Seth, which is why you're getting an abortion. Because you don't love him. Which is why I think you should leave him. Who would stay with someone for four years if they didn't love that person? You, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> what, did Quentin forget to change the cat litter again or something? What? That face you're making. Um, you... <sighs> Quinn is just, you know she loves you, right? What happened? And you know, like, how sometimes she just kind of like... Minnie. She just decides what's best for everyone. What happened? Just, what the fuck did she do? Don't answer it. It's Seth. Don't answer. Why not? Just trust me, okay? Seth? So it didn't go well? 
can we talk hypothetically, please? About you hypothetically not taking my sister to get an abortion? If we could fix health care and women have access to maternal leave, would you still be pro-choice? What the fuck did you say to my sister? Seth, no, wait! I didn't say anything. I'm just, I'm wondering if I can in good conscience continue down this path. In good conscience? Seth, she's it's more complicated than that. She's making a mistake. That doesn't get to be your decision, Quinn. I want to offer to take in the baby. What? Seth, wait, I... Have you lost your goddamn mind? We could take the baby in. We want kids, don't we? You know we can afford it. We can. That way the baby stays in the family. Lexa can visit whenever she wants. No, Quinn, don't do this. I just think that this is better for everyone involved. Where's my sister? Seth, I wanted to tell you, but I didn't know. Minnie. Where's Lexa? I've got it pulled up. You knew about this? I just found out around the same time Seth called. What is happening? Quinn wrote an article about this, this whole thing. This is how life begins. She wrote, I don't know what to call it, an expose how the US looks at maternal care and basically said that if- That if we could fix it, we could, hold on, how did she put it? Eradicate the poison that is abortion. I didn't even know she was working on it. We had talked about it. You but talked about it? Not about her writing the article, just about you and What how about me? Come on, Lex. You told her first. You had to know we talked about it. Talk about helping me. Yes, I did not talk about how... Hold on, let me find it. The desperation of these women has become capital gain. I'm just a desperate woman now, is that it? You know that's not how I feel. I checked the website on a whim. I saw it and asked Quinn to take it down. I didn't think she showed Seth. She didn't, technically. Seth saw it too. He thought it was just a think piece, so he commented on it, and then Quinn told him that someone close to him was having one. That shitty. That's fucking Quinn. She I means well. Fuck, I should have known she'd do something like this. She probably totally took me to the anti-abortion clinic on purpose. Yes, that I do think she did on purpose. I hope she dies. <laughs> Holly, that's intense. Like, I hope that someone pushes her into like a tank of gasoline and then lights the whole thing on fire. Holy shit. Good Lex. news, we're in Wichita Falls. <laughs> Bad news, I got a pullover, we need gas. Thanks for letting us know. I'm just saying, you and Seth are a better pair than you think. Abortion is hard and I don't want you- You know what? Fuck off, Quinn. This has nothing to do with you. I like the name Alexis. What? But it's really close to Alexa, like ridiculously close. <laughs> like why not just name your kid Alexa? I am not talking to you. You're talking to me now. In like general. I get the whole gender neutral vibe you're going for, which is now so very cool, but 
I just met a man named Alexis like a few weeks ago and it still took me a minute. Minnie. Why not Alex? That's a solid gender neutral name. If you let me, I totally call you Alex. I am not talking to you. And President really Lex, like, that looks like a shitty job. Like, look at pictures of presidents before they go in and when they come out. <laughs> they look ragged. And no president could ever really be what the whole country needs. Like, no matter what, half the country will hate your kid. And the assassination attempts. Holy shit, yes. Not only will half the country hate your kid, all of those people will try to kill her. <laughs> if it were me, I want my kid to go pro. You, something classic, like a lawyer or doctor. That's boring. I don't want my kid having some scandalous life. Boring is nice. Boring is boring. Your girlfriend just told all of our friends, all of our followers, everyone that we know that I was having an abortion. Yeah, but I didn't. Why am I being punished for what Connie Connerson did? You knew. Not really. My girlfriend bitched about maternal care. She didn't say your name once. She told Seth. She did that. Want to call her a cunt so you feel better? You know I hate that word. It is like beyond the worst thing you can call a woman. So fitting. All of our friends do not know Lex. They probably think Quinn's going on another one of her rants. She's trying to guilt trip me. It's Quinn. It's shitty. Again, it's Quinn. She's a shitty, shitty person. One might even call her I'm a... not calling her that. <laughs> it's Seth. Just throw your phone out the window. I could roll the window down. That would be a me thing to do. Just, I just got this phone, though, and I, I like really like it, and I didn't get the warranty, so... <laughs> Why didn't you get the warranty? Really? That's what you want to talk about right now? <laughs> Better than the alternatives. I should talk to him, I know. You have talked to him. I mean talk, talk, not just get yelled at because of fucking Quinn. Oh, now you're shrugging? He could have handled finding out better. He found out from a blog written by my best friend. Worst possible way to find out. Well, at least now he knows. All your T's have been crossed. You sound like mom. She is my mother. Are you gonna say anything to Quinn? Doubtfully. All of this is her fault. So maybe not all of it? Like, she didn't get you pregnant? All of it. I know you hate me right now. I don't hate you. You're mad. Of course I'm mad. She's not like you. What? You're not exactly. You would probably handle it better. And why is that, Quinn? Because you don't really have feelings. <laughs> You're the goddamn devil. You know that, right? <laughs> I'm just saying most women regret their abortions. Actually, they don't. Stop fucking with my sister's life. Minnie. I'm so serious, Quinn. Do one more shitty thing, just one more, and we're done. Back from AA? <sighs> the meeting was rough. Yeah? I want us to be okay. We're okay. No, we're not. What'd you talk about? At AA? Yeah. Taylor. What'd you talk about? You think I didn't go? I think you didn't go. How long are we going to be like this? You're an alcoholic and a compulsive liar. It was literally your job. I was not a compulsive liar. 
You work in finance, you lied just as much as I did. I don't have a drinking problem. Taylor, come on. This isn't living. Do you trust me or not? You know I don't trust you. I talked about meeting you in a bar. How so many of my memories, good and bad, happen to me in bars, which makes it harder. Be honest with me. I am. You honestly went to the one on six? The one on six is on Tuesdays and is closed. I went to the one on 28th. Hell of a walk, by the way. We'll get there. Back to okay? Just give me some time. I'm just saying, I don't want to be punished for what Quinn did. This is just... Like, this is life-ruining, isn't it? Like, friends don't do this. Quinn's not really a good friend. But I'm sorry she did this. I know. When I get back, I don't think Seth and I will still be together. I don't think he'll forgive me, not if I go through with it. So it's really hard not to be mad at someone. Well, be mad at Quinn. Be mad at the U.S. Be mad at Seth for not using a condom. Just don't be mad at me. <laughs> Quinn and I definitely won't be together when I get back. I'd break up with her now, but I'd rather just ghost her. <laughs> How very 2017 of you. I'm very hip. She was bad in bed anyway. Really? Not all the time. Are you just saying that? No. Maybe. <laughs> How are you two so comfortable with each other? Oh, because we'd rather talk about sex with our partners than our actual lives. There's my sister. Is Taylor good in bed? Lex. What? Yes, very. <laughs> you might as well ask what they like in bed or what kind of toys they use. Well, I am not answering any of that. <laughs> well, there you go, men. You made her uncomfortable. I did. Yes. <laughs> Quinn. Is she like secretly super pro-life or something? No, she's just super pro your specific My life. life. <laughs> she thinks she won't be able to handle it. What is there to handle? Okay, new game. What's the worst thing a woman can do other than have an abortion? What? Like, in the eyes of the conservative Catholic brand. So basically everyone we grew up around? Yes. I don't know. I have like basic rights. <laughs> no, be serious. What's the worst thing you can think of? Not including abortion. Right. Well, abortion is murder, so murder's out because they're equal. <laughs> Incest. Is it really, though? Like, if someone's dad rapes them, the nun said, that was an unfortunate blessing. <laughs> oh, my God, I totally forgot about that. That is like word for word what they would say. Right? <laughs> did you grow up Catholic? I didn't, but I know a few people who did. Being gay, but like acting on it, that is worse. Than abortion? Like, all out multiple same-sex partners, like full-on debauchery. <laughs> That's worse. Is it though? Oh yeah, no. In some hardcore groups, fornicating is still a pretty big deal, so being gay and fornicating, please, one-way trip to hell. <laughs> I'm sorry about Quinn. It's okay. I mean, 
it's totally not okay, but you're right. You didn't do it. I, mean, I should have told you that we had been fighting about it. It's, that's why I was pressuring you to tell Seth. I knew it was a matter of time before she did. What's Taylor doing tonight? Probably reading. What kind of books does she like? The ones with words in them. It sounds like Lex. She'll read anything in front of her. There is nothing wrong with literacy. I love you. I know. <laughs> Why'd you stay? Even after, after I... you cheated on me, had an abortion, relapsed, lied to me All about of it. alcohol. That was me. awful. That was awful. I stayed because I love you too. I love you. But more than that, I believe in you. Two things. I got a job today. <gasps> oh, as what? A janitor. A taxi driver. I start tomorrow. Are you okay with that? What? Going from being one of the best lawyers to being a taxi driver? Oh, it sounds so judgmental when you put it like that. I think it's a great way to start over. Plus, I like driving. Oh. Always have. You do. Such a weirdo. The only person I know that doesn't curse in traffic. I like driving. Even when I'm not moving, there's just something, I don't know, equally safe and dangerous about being in a car. Oh. <laughs> I also like people. Mm, most people. What's the other thing? Oh, that. Uh, oh. I thought about asking in some grandiose way, but oh, huh. yeah, I, I realize you have no reason to say yes right now, and that is beyond fair, but this is me asking. No one needs? Not yet. I realize I have a lot to make up for, but when you're ready to marry me, you let me know by putting on this ring. Absolutely, whenever you're ready, and we'll get married that day. You realize this isn't going to fix everything, right? Yeah. And that we're incredibly broken still. You still want to get married? I do and that you've relapsed recently. I'm doing the best that I can. You're starting a new career. Not exactly a career. It's a brand new path to temptation. What if you hate it? Then I hate it. Really? Really? <laughs> I mean, if this blows up in our face, divorce is still a thing, right? <laughs> It's a bit late. We might have to wait to get married tomorrow. <laughs> I love you. I know. You're looking terrible. What happened? Yes. Quinn? Seth is there. There? Our apartment crying. Why did he go to Quinn? Where the hell else was he going to go? His own friends? Any of them? And cry about his girlfriend's pending abortion? Okay, fair enough. New game. Seriously? <laughs> what am I supposed to do about Seth crying? Turn the cab around? Uh, if that's what you want. No. I that cannot happen. That is not happening. This has to happen now. Okay. But why, though? You're still pretty early on. Seriously? Are you okay with this or not? I get exhausted by how many people expect me to want children. I just... What just happened? Like, I was just thinking about it. If you're a woman and you don't want kids, you're awful. You get to a certain age and everything else fails to matter. Like, driver, how often do people ask you, do you have children? 
all the time. You're a woman of a certain age and all they want to talk about is kids. Exactly. Is this y'all trying to convince me to turn the cab around? This is me pulling a you. Let's get heavy. <laughs> like, seriously, am I worthless because I don't want children? Yes. <laughs> Women are supposed to want children. It is our evolutionary duty to procreate. And like, I was on the bus the other day talking to this woman and I was just saying I was tired. That was it. And she goes, tired? You don't know tired. Wait until you have kids, then you'll know tired. <laughs> like, seriously, do moms own emotions now? Yes. My mom was telling me the other day that just because I'm choosing this life doesn't mean children aren't an option. Oh, gosh. I know. And like no mom anywhere that I've ever actually met actually seems to like it. It's always that whole, my kids ruin my life, my business, my dream, but oh, I still love them with that half a smile thing that no one anywhere ever really believes. <laughs> That's not fair. I think that women can have kids and love their kids and still feel, I don't know, sad for the life they didn't have. I mean, it is not their fault that society is Lexa. just not the right moment. If you don't want to have a kid, then don't fucking have one. But call your crime boyfriend. Have a conversation. Tell the truth. If it ends in a breakup, then okay, but... Don't throw it away because you won't regret the abortion, but you'll regret losing him, and I don't want that for you. I can't. I'm not. Okay. Who? What? No, who? Who do you know who had an abortion? Lexa, no. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. I just, if it was someone close to you, did they, do they talk about it? You cannot ask things like that, Lex. It was me. I did. Oh. Oh, oh my God. I am so sorry for all the murder talk it's okay. earlier. It's okay. I just. I got it. What happened? Is that too heavy? Not heavy, just not something I like thinking about. Do you regret it? I regret how I got pregnant but the abortion, not even a little bit. How did you know you'd be okay? I trusted myself. None of the other options really felt right. So the father wasn't, he wasn't someone that you loved? He was someone I didn't even like. I've ruined Seth. This isn't about Seth, Lex. What do you want? If you want, we can just Go home and talk about this tomorrow. And waste $1,200? We have to pay her. Look, we're not even at the border yet. We can turn around now and I'll keep 500 No, I don't want to turn around. I want to keep going. I have to keep going. I know that this is something I want to do. Are you sure? Yes. I don't want to be pregnant. Okay. Like... I just, I know that this is something that needs to happen. I just, God, I hate all the collateral. The collateral is the worst part, but it gets better, especially if you're honest. At least it did for me. What? You gonna tell me you don't drink? <laughs> I've seen your friends many. I don't drink wine. Mm -hmm. I know all that in theory, I just, is everything really okay if I'm not with Seth in the end? And my friends don't drink. I do, but they don't. Sure, Minnie. Will you at least try? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gross. What is this for anyway? It's been a year today. Mom, you were sulking this morning. Lexa saw you. Where is Lexa? I don't know, something. You didn't tell her, did you? I promised you I wouldn't. 
But you should, someday. I know, I should tell her, someday. But what's the wine for? It's like noon. <laughs> We're celebrating. We're celebrating the worst day of my life? No. We're celebrating the day you got your body back. It still doesn't feel like mine. I thought I'd wake up this morning and be fine, but I'm not. I'm not okay. Well, then we'll drink every year on this day. And hopefully in one of those years, on one of those days, your body will feel like yours again. Do you think there will be protesters there? Yeah, Lex. I do. Are they not the worst? Quinn moved out for a year after I told her about my abortion. I'm sorry, you're what? what? Yeah. What happened? Why didn't you tell me? It was like two weeks before you called her. What, what happened? happened? That doesn't really matter now, does it? Of course it matters. Min, what? It happened in high school. Mom and I had our own abortion road trip. Mom knows? This is a massive thing to hide from someone. This is, this is a betrayal. Quinn totally flipped out. I don't know why I said it in passing and she just lost her shit. I gotta get out of here. I just, you're seriously not gonna tell me what happened? Was it someone in high school? Was it, was it Jefferson? He's the only person you slept with in high school. Ugh, I knew that son of a bitch was not to be trusted. Who sleeps with their students? Is that why you wanna punch him? It doesn't really matter. All that matters is that it was a disaster. Min, did he, did he rape you? It wasn't him, random guy, and it wasn't this exact situation. Holy shit, Minnie, you cannot tell me in a cab that you had an abortion and that you were raped. That is just like. That doesn't matter. All that matters is that that situation doesn't make me the worst. It makes me a girl. Young woman who was raped. Stop saying rape. I was a girl in a situation. A shitty situation. And I found a way out. I didn't want it to get that heavy. <laughs> you know me, it's, it isn't. <laughs> All I'm trying to say is, not everyone has the same way out. Did mom call it the abortion road trip? She totally did. Such a cool mom. But cool dad, right? Cool dad. On a scale of one to 10, how mad would you be if I finished my obituary? Seriously? <laughs> you would do that to me after I told you my deep, dark secret. I just feel like a good obituary should be like funny. I have literally never laughed in an obituary. <laughs> And have you ever read an obituary and gone, huh, whoa, cool obituary? I have not. Exactly. Will you at least rewrite it first? Yeah, hold on. Oh, Seth called again. Okay, where should we start? You can start by calling Seth back. I think it's pretty fair to say that Alex is a better gender neutral name than Alexis. Right. What about River? River Pearson. Sounds like a place, not a person. But like super hippie, right? Which you are not. You use a Kindle. And that makes me not a hippie? You're constantly touching your phone. 
Aren't hippies all about conserving energy? The boring ones. <laughs> you mean the real ones. Okay, fine. What about moon? Now you're just fucking around. No, I totally am. I'm gonna stick with River, who I think we should have like an effigy for. Are you sure Define that's- Define effigy. What? I don't think it means what you think it means. <laughs> It's like when you light incense and throw a bunch of stuff on a fire and then say it's a prayer. statue. <laughs> really? Really? Oh no! Oh hell no! I do not want one of those. <laughs> so, river. I can't. Then don't. I will. I just. I know. What? Oh, Jesus. Quinn. She posted a picture of Seth crying to her blog. <laughs> well, that's exciting. I think it's fair to say that I had no idea she was going to do that. You know, you really got to give it to her. She's really standing up for what she believes in. Yeah, by being a sociopath. But she's your special sociopath. <laughs> you should talk to her. <laughs> I'm not really in a mood to talk to Satan. Will Seth be okay? Yeah, I'm gonna text him to tell him I'll call him when we get to New Mexico. I can't believe she posted a picture of him crying online. Our friends definitely know now. Satan. Exactly. I'm still not over you never telling me about your abortion. Like, that is massive. Like you telling my girlfriend about your abortion before telling me massive? You mean your girlfriend who just posted a picture of my crying boyfriend online? I'm gonna win this one, men. <laughs> oh, I gotta pull over. What's wrong with the car? Coolant, I gotta refill it. <laughs> Good, we can use the brake anyway. Wait a second. To put coolant in? Doesn't the engine have to cool down? I guess so. <laughs> what is that? Wine. Well, yes, I can see that. You're right. I should have told you about my abortion. I should have told you years ago. Yes, you should have. But remember how you said the least people you told, the less real it felt? Still, though. I know. I think it's pretty fair to say that we will not be talking to Quinn anymore. I'm sorry, I should have told you years ago. I just, I made mom promise not to tell you, anyone. That must have been hard for her. No, mom. It's just, I don't like to get heavy. It's some things I would like to never, ever have to talk about ever again. Why the wine? I'm glad you asked. When I was just fucked up over everything, mom made me drink terrible wine. She made you? Yes, and it was gross. Was it gas station wine? No, mom. She made me drink every year on the day of my abortion. So, here. Is today that day? No, but today's yours. So here we are in the Texas. Oh, wait, holy shit, Lex, we're at the border. <laughs> A few feet off, but yeah. Get it, we're crossing the border. Oh, God, that's terrible. Right. AA, remember? Oh, shit, I'm so sorry. 
Wait, I didn't forget about you. <laughs> Is this the most disgusting grape juice you could find? Drink. Great drink. Juice is nowhere on the bottle. <laughs> oh, that is not real. Yes, juice. that's how we feel. <laughs> Why am I drinking with you? You met two strangers, told them you had an abortion in a cab, and you can't drink about it. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you two aren't so bad. River Falcon Pearson was the envy of all of her friends. You're really going to make us sit through another obituary. After graduating from Yale, River graduated summa cum laude. Not you too. <laughs> and then after graduation, she went on to join the Peace Corps. No, that's pretentious. Her name is River. She would be pretentious. <laughs> she lived in Honduras where she met the love of her life. And then she moved back to the U.S. with her love to... No, I'm not participating in this. This is <laughs> super unhealthy. To fight for migrant rights. Yes. You're both insane. I think I am. You drank all that wine? You're totally going to have to pee soon. I already have to pee. <laughs> You're my actual favorite. 